that you counted us worthy to be alive and well this day. Some people saw the beginning of today, they are no more. We are still here. We thank you, Lord. For our eyes that can see, our ears that can hear, our mouth that can play, praise you, Father. We give you praise. Thank you for this episode of Choose Life, Mighty God. Holy Spirit, speak through me, Mighty God, and touch the heart of your people who will hear this word tonight, Mighty God. And let your name be glorified. And let blessing be asked, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We give God all the glory. We are alive. We are well again on another episode of uh, Choose Life. My name is Adi Esan, the minister in charge of the Good News Bureau's International Ministry. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in your presence again this evening. Thank you for watching, those who are watching already, and those who will join us. Thank you, and God bless you. Well, last week we started on uh, the topic, except a man is born again. Except a man is born again. And uh, we started by asking the question, does, <clears throat> does being born in a church, being raised in a church, serving in a church, or even holding position in a church, does it make one a Christian? And we answered the question, some people said yes, some people said no. But we went to the word of God and see what the word of God said. You know, and he said that Jesus told that man, Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, an authority. He's an interpreter of the word of God. He knew the word of God to the core. He knew it and they practiced it. But something was still missing in his life. So he went to Jesus by night. And he started praising Jesus. Oh, you're a man from God. You're a rabbi from God, except... You no, know, somebody is from God, you can't do all this you are doing. Jesus didn't wait you know, for his prayer. He just told him point blank. Except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then he started asking, how would that happen? Because we are going to come like that. So we are saying that one has to be born again. Going to church, living in church, being raised in a church does not make one a Christian. Why? make mention of what the Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful above every other thing and desperately wicked and we talk about uh, I give an example of three friends they were friends very good friends though they were poor and but they remained as friends over many years so, so one day they were going about their normal business begging and you know, whatever they can do to make keep their soul and body together. And suddenly they stumble across a, a bag containing a lot of money, like $50,000. Uh, they were happy. They were, you know, they give thanks to God. Wow. Things are started, you know, getting better for them. So they got the money, they counted it. They saw how much was in. They were very happy. Now they have not eaten. Maybe all day or maybe two days, before that day. So they chose one of them. They, uh, one of them should go and buy food for them. You know, the two of the two, they said, two of them decided to stay with the money and keep it so that, hey, nothing will touch it. So the one who was sent to buy food went. When he got there, he bought food and treated himself to, you know, to the best of, uh, of the food over there. Now, then he bought more food for the remaining two. As he was coming, I was thinking, started thinking of that money, 50,000. Uh, what of if that 50,000 be, be belong to him alone? Or what if he has a lion share of it? He has, can, no. Taking at least 30,000, then the, rest, the remaining two to take 10,000 each. He started you know, thinking, no. either I have the lion share of it, or have the whole money can belong to me. Yeah, I have to do something. So he bought poison. Missing with the food was going to you know, take to his, his friends. And when he got there, before he got there too, his friend was started planning. Hey, this one, this rackal one that has gone to get food. How can we get rid of him? So that only two of us will share this money. You know. So they also plan their own evil thing. That when he comes, they are going to pounce on him, they are going to strangle him, they are going to kill him. So that only, only two of them will share the money. So was all of them have their evil plan. The man who went to buy the food came with the food. He said, hey, here is your food. Before he even put the food down, the two of them jumped on him. Boom. They beat him. They strangled him. They killed him. 
he dumped his body somewhere. So now they say now the money belongs to the two of us now. They settle down to eat, they eat. Okay. Before they, uh, they finish eating, the poison took effect. Both of them died. Now the three of them died. The money was there. Who will have that money? Who will have that money? So that's how wicked the man's heart is. The Bible says the imagination of man's heart continually is evil. It's evil. How did that happen? In Genesis 1, 31, God said, the Bible said, when God created the heaven and earth and created man in his own image and breathed into the nature of man, the breath of life, man became a living soul. Then the Bible said, behold, God looked at everything he has created. Everything was very good. Everything was very good. Everything was perfect. There was no evil. There was no evil thought. There was no evil plan. So, but when the enemy came and deceived Adam and Eve and caused them to sin against God, to disobey God, to take side with him against the God who created them, who gave them everything, who provided everything you were going to need even before he created them, they took side with the devil and they sinned against God. And with that, that's when evil came into the world. That evil came into the world. You know, so that's how man became naturally evil. The nature of man became evil. When, that's why when a child is born, sin is part of his life. We won't, no parent will see, teach his child this is how you, you should you know, steal. This is how you should do evil. But it's part of our nature. It is part of our nature, which we inherited. From the Garden of Eden, when man fell and took side with the devil. And with that evil nature, we cannot really see God. We cannot really see God. You know? Because evil, God is holy. And with that evil nature, we cannot see God. John 8, 39 to 41 reads <clears throat> Jesus was in the temple teaching, and there some of his listeners, including the Jews, the, uh, the Pharisees, were antagonizing him. They were arguing with him. Okay? Say, verse 39 said, They answered and said to him, to Jesus, Our father is Abraham. Then Jesus said to them, If you are Abraham's children, you will do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who, God has, to, who, has, who has told you the truth, which I have from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. And they said to him, "You are not born. You are one. We have one Father, which is God." So, let me go to verse forty-four. What did Jesus tell them? Jesus said, "You are of your father, the devil, and the desire of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie." He speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. That is the devil. That is the nature of the Bible says he was the murderer from the beginning. All his desire was to do evil. He was a liar. He was a murderer. And when he you know, deceived man in the garden, we embrace his nature. We embrace his evil nature. He came to steal and kill and to destroy. And when he deceived man, he had adopted his evil nature. Man become naturally evil. He became slave, you know, slave to sin, to all his evil. So the heart of man, the Bible says, is des desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. So with this evil nature that we say from uh, the devil, you cannot see God's kingdom. You cannot enter into it. You know, Hebrews 12, 14 says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see God. Without holiness, no one will see God. Someone will say, Oh, my say, I'm a good person. I'm kind. I'm gentle. I'm generous. You know, that, those things are good. But we still have nature of sin. We still have the nature of sin. It's still within us. And with that, we cannot attain God's level of holiness. We cannot attain God's level of holiness. You have, we have to be born again. You have to be born again. 
we have to be born again. Except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He might be a good person. He might be the best in, the, in, in town. You know, he might be generous. He might be gentle. He might be easygoing. He might be even given to the, the poor. He's not born again. No, he cannot still see the kingdom of God. So I'm going to share again from my book, A New Birth, God's Key, key to All of God's Provision. Key to All of God's Provision. I'm going to read from uh, page 50. Going back to uh, discussion between Nicodemus and uh, Jesus. Jesus explained to him, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God except he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Okay, that's John 3, 5 and 6, NIV. Being born of flesh, uh, being born of water, that like Jesus said, refers to our first birth, that is, our physical birth by our mothers into this world. The baby in the womb of a pregnant woman is surrounded by, by and suspended in the transparent and almost colorless fluid called amniotic fluid. This fluid, which is 98% water, protects the fetus or the baby, this young baby in the womb from injury, helps maintain an even temperature and allows free movement of the fetus. Now the fetus is contained in a thin transparent membrane called amnion, which blends with an outer membrane called chorion to form a sac called the bag of water. When it is time for the delivery of the baby, this bag of water bursts, and its contents, which is mainly water, flows out of the womb, followed by the baby itself. So this, I believe, is what Jesus was referring to as being born of water. Being born of water. That's a physical birth to this by our parents, by our mother. He wasn't referring to water baptism like some people, you know, interpret it to be. That which is born of water is a physical birth into this earth. When that bag busted and the water flows out, followed by the baby, that's what Jesus was referring to as being born of water. Now, that's the first birth. On the other hand, being born of the Spirit is the second birth. And it's something quite different from the first. It means to be born spiritually. Man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. Man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. When you look at a person, what you see is the body. You see the face, you see the body. But that body, that part that you see is just the house or the cage where the real person lives. The real person is the spirit of man. It's the spirit of man, which only God sees. Nobody, nobody sees it. I cannot see my spirit. Nobody can see my spirit. But God is the only one that sees it. And it's with this our spirit that we contact God, that we connect with God, because God is spirit. God is spirit. You know? It is by the way of this spirit, or a hidden man as described by the Peter in 1 Peter 3, 4, that we connect with God, that we contact God. We contact the physical world by the physical body, but the spirit of man is the one by which we contact God. And it is this spirit which is the real person, which is the real us. Because this body is from the dust, and the dust, it will return. But when a person dies, the spirit will get out of this body and will go to his creator. I will go to uh, the Almighty God. It is this spirit that needs to be born again. It is this spirit that needs to be regenerated. It is this spirit that needs to, be, you know, to experience the rebirth. Hallelujah. Outward, outwardly, a person might, can be friendly, kind, caring, and helpful. Such was Nicodemus. He was one of the best of his time. He was a well-respected teacher and keeper of the law among the Jews, among his peers. But yet, with all this, he was in turmoil. He didn't have peace. He didn't have peace. People were respecting him, they were looking out to him, oh, as a person over there, but he didn't have peace. That's why he knew something was still lacking in his life. 
That's why he came to Jesus. And he couldn't come during the day because he was even had more respect in the society than Jesus himself. So he was ashamed to come to Jesus in the daytime. So people would say, uh uh, oh God, Rabbi, why did you go to that no, man that we don't even know where he came from? So he had to come at night. He had to come at night to visit Jesus. And Jesus told him, except he is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus told him what was wrong with him. If everything looks out you know, good outwardly. In this society, he was in the high status. But spiritually, something was missing. Something was missing. You know, the real him, the spirit, was sinful, was wicked, was selfish, and needed to be reborn. And as soon as that happened, he could have peace with God and be able to enter God's kingdom. Nicodemus, if you look at it, he had education. He was a rabbi, a teacher. He has wealth. He has good position. He has religion. He was religious. He knew the law inside out. He can interpret it to the core. And he, he keep it as well. He has prestige in the society. But all of this combined could not solve his internal spiritual problem. So it is with everybody. If one experienced the second birth, or regeneration, we cannot be in tune with God, we cannot be at peace with God, and we cannot enter into God's kingdom. A man has to be born again to enter into God's kingdom. He has to be born again to enter into God's kingdom. You know, like we said in the beginning, going to church is good, being born and raised in church is wonderful, and even serving God is good, but still one has to be born again. One has to be born again. And oh, my father is a pastor. That doesn't mean anything. You have to have a relationship with God. You have to be born again. Your father might be born again. If you are not born again, you are not going to see the kingdom of God. You are not going to see the kingdom of God. Somebody said God doesn't have a, a grandchild. You only have children. So one has to have a relationship with God personally. One has to be born again. Like uh, Billy, we, all know, we all know the evangelist Billy Graham, who has preached all over the world. Well known, renowned evangelist. He has taught the whole world, he has preached in almost all the countries of the world. Many people have been born again through you know, his ministry. But his son, Franklin, you know, was going a different way. You know, some part of his uh, life he was going different, different from the way of, of his father. So one day the father has to. Call him and sit him down. Hey, you are Billy Graham's uh, son. That's nice. But that doesn't get you to heaven. You can't go to heaven on my license um, or on, on my back. I can't carry you to heaven. You have to have your own relationship with God. You have to have your own relationship with God. If you don't, I'm sorry. You are not going to be together when you get to uh, eternity. You're going to go in a separate, you know, separate ways. So you have to have your own connection with God. Your spirit has to be connected to God. You have to be born again. You say, oh, your father is worried on evangelist. So that is, takes care of me. I'll take that, that ticket to heaven. No, it doesn't work that way. So until he took that step and got born again, then that's why he has the assurance that he's going to see the kingdom of God, going to go to heaven himself. So, you might be going to church, you might be serving God in our own way, those are wonderful things, but you still have to be born again. You have to be born again. Except a spirit is born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Good work is good, being kind is good, being generous is good, but you still have to be born again. You still have to be born again. How does it happen? You say, okay, tell me, how to be, I'll, be, I'll be hearing it. You have to be born again. You have to be born again. Like demon, Nicodemus asked Jesus, after I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an old man, I'm an adult, do I go back to my mother's womb and be born again? No. He didn't say, I mean, so Jesus was telling him, it's only your spirit that needs to be born again, not your body. Not your body. When somebody is born again, you don't see somebody who is, uh, who is short suddenly gets you know, tall or suddenly gets big, suddenly get huge. The body will not change. 
It is the spirit that is regenerated. It is the spirit that is changed. And then, if one doesn't come, you know, go the different way, the spirit that is changed will manifest in the body and the action, and things will change. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's see what a new birth, what is not. It is not religion. It is not religion. It is not religion. It is a spiritual transformation. It happens inside. It happens inside. And then it works from inside out. Nicodemus has religion. He knows the Torah inside out. I mean, he could interpret it from morning till evening. And they pride themselves that they live by it. They live by it. They believe they are above other sects. They believe that they are above other set of people. Like we saw last uh, week about a person, who, one of them who went to the temple to pray and just beat his chest and say, Lord, I thank you. That's, I'm not like that man over there. Talk pointing to the tax collector. I pay my tithes to the, no, to the dot. And I fast too many times a week. And I do this and I do that. He was boasting, was bragging. All the belief, all those things that they had it as enough. They have, so that's all they need. But the tax collector will not even raise his eye to, to heaven. He bowed his head and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And the Bible said, Jesus said, that man went to his house justified. Rather than the Pharisee was bragging, was beating his chest. Because he who exalt himself will be humble. So you have to be born again. A new birth is not about religion. It's not about church going. I know it's about living by the set of rules. Uh, living, you have to touch, don't touch this, don't do that, don't wear that, don't say, no, mm, mm, mm. it's not that. Some people believe that once you dress in the normal way, you dress this way, you don't eat this, you don't touch that, that some, some, some group of people do, okay, that's good enough. That pleases God. You are going straight to heaven. No. It's not by keeping a set of rules. And it's not by keeping Ten Commandments. It's by opening your one heart to God. One heart to <coughs> open one's heart to God. Romans ten <coughs> nine to ten. You have quoted this verses many times in this program. Romans ten nine to ten. Romans chapter ten. Okay, now let's read from verse eight. from verse 8. So what does he say? The world is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth with your mouth, confess the Lord Jesus and believe with your heart with your heart, with your spirit the inner man the one through which you connect God you believe that God has risen from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Believe with your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Not believe with your head, believe with your heart. Because your heart, is a, Bible refer to the heart as the spirit, not the uh, blood pumping muscle in our, in, in, in our body, but the spirit, which nobody can see, which only God can see. And once you, you are serious about it, you believe God with your heart, you are Jesus with your heart and ask him to come into your life, God honors it. God honors it. And Jesus said, yeah, knock on the door. I stand at the door and knock. If anybody hears my voice, and open, he will come in. He will come in. So we have need to be born again. So you have to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Because you have to say it. You have to you can't say, I believe with your mouth and then keep your mouth shut. No, you have to say it. Because God created the whole universe with the word of his mouth. God said, let there be, and there was. If just God had the idea in his heart, oh, I want to create this beautiful earth, I want to create this, the universe, I want to create, a man is my own image, I want to create uh, animals, uh, fishes, all those things, bird of the air, I didn't say it out. Nothing would have happened. 
But Jesus said, and God said it, let there be light, the light appear. Let the water gather themselves, they, they, they did so. Let's make man in our image, they did so. So God spoke the whole world into existence. So God wants us to speak with our mouth now, confess with our mouth that what we believe in our heart. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Then believe with your heart. Believe with your heart. Believe with your heart. That God raised him from the dead. Not with your head, not head knowledge. Believe with your heart, with your inner man. Yeah? Then accept him. God is a gift. Bible says by the grace we are saved. We are saved by the grace. Jesus is a gift to us. You know, by confessing him as Lord, by believing on him and accepting the work of salvation which he has you know, done for us, we will be born again. Then after that, your spirit man, like a Bible says, like a, a little born babe, you have to feed on spiritual food. Because your spirit is one that is born again, not your body. That that spirit that is born again is now a baby. And it needs to eat. Like uh, when a baby is born, he needs to eat. If he doesn't eat, he will, he will eventually die. So the spirit also that is born again is a new baby in Christ. You have to be fed with the spiritual food. And the spiritual food is the word of God. It's the word of God. You have to feed on it. You have to feed on it. You have to listen to it when it's being preached. You have to read on it on your own. You have to meditate on it on your own. And by that, your spirit will grow. The new born baby, your spirit will start growing. Start growing. Start growing. Start growing. And as it grows, it will have you know, strength to overcome the flesh. You have strength to overcome the flesh. You have strength to control the flesh. You have strength to tell the flesh, hey, mm -mm, don't do that. Don't do that. But if the spirit is not fed, you won't grow. You remain stunted. You remain a babe for life. And the flesh will continue to rule over it. The flesh will continue to rule over it. You know? So, after confessing Jesus as Lord, believing with the hearts, and then accepting Jesus for the finished work on the cross, then you have to feed our spirit, which is a newborn spirit, which is a newborn babe. And the spirit, the, work, the, the food of the spirit is the word of God. Word of God. Somebody says that some people feed their flesh, their body, three or four you know, hot meals in a day, but they feed their spirit with a cold snack once in a week. That's not good. That's not good. You have to, when you are born again, a new babe in Christ, you have to feed on the Word of God. You have to feed that spirit. It has to grow. Any way you can get it, you have to feed it. Listen, watching, reading. Meditating on your own so that your spirit can grow. Your spirit can grow. And when it grows, you'll be able to overcome all the you know, work of the flesh. That's why Paul said, I put my body into subjection. I, I put my body into subjection. Some people will say, well, What is he talking about? I put my body, it's his body and him. Are they not the same thing? No, they're not the same thing. What he was saying that my spirit, the real me that is inside, that nobody sees. I, that's, that's, that's who, he, who he was. He said, I put my body, hey, body, the cage where I live, the house where I live, I put into subjection. I don't let it control me. I don't let it lord it over me. I put into subjection. You know, I take control of it. I tell you what to do. I tell you what to say. I tell you where to go. You know, so that after preaching the gospel, I will not be a castaway. What Paul said, I put my body into subjection. But before he can put his body, before his spirit can put his body into subjection, the spirit has to have been fed. He must have been feeding on his spirit. Feeding his spirit. Spirit must have grown. Have enough flesh, have enough energy to take control of the flesh. But if you only feed our flesh and you know, starve our spirit, it will remain a babe. It will remain stunted. And the body, our body continues to, to lord it over it, to take it wherever it wants to, it will, the body wants to go. And the spirit will not be able to you know, do what it's meant, supposed to do. I will not be able to say like Paul, oh, I put my body to subjection. We should be able to say that with Paul. 
by the grace of God, I will put my body into subjection. My spirit will be in charge. My spirit will be leading. My spirit will be leading my body, telling me what to do. Because it's a spirit that has connection with God. It's a spirit that is connected to God. And when the spirit is leading, you will not miss it. You will not miss it. You will not miss it. You will overcome the word of, 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 of the work of the flesh. You will overcome the nature of the flesh that we have of the devil that we have inherited from him. And as we will be in tune with God. And God will be happy with us. And when we leave this world, we know that we're going to reign with him. We're going to see him. We're going to see his kingdom. And go to reign with him. Except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you are listening to me this evening, if you have not really been born again, you are not at one point in your life say, hey, Today is this day. The Bible said, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of your deliverance. You have heard the word of God today. If you are not taking the step to be born again, to become a child of God, this is another opportunity. The Bible said in John 1, 12, as many as believe on him, God gives power to become a child of God. You believe in the Lord Jesus. Jesus is your brother. You are a son of God. You are a child of God. So, like I said, all you need to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe with your heart. Believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. You shall be saved. It's as simple as that. It doesn't have cost, cost you money. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you sincerely say do it, God honors it. God, no, God knows your heart. He's the only one that knows your heart. He's the only one that sees your heart. Nobody else sees it, but God sees it. If you are sincere about it, God will honor it, and you become a child of God. So, if you want to do that, can you say after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you gave your life for me. I thank you. You died to give me life. I confess you with my mouth. Jesus, you are my Lord, and I believe with my heart. That God raised you from the dead. I believe I'm saved. And I thank you God. For saving me today. Through my confession. And through my belief. Thank you Father. For I pray. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you confessed and believed. God honors it. God sees your heart. And I say congratulations you have done so. God help you because strengthen you start a new journey in the name of Jesus if you have any questions about this topic or any other topic we have discussed previously call all on, the, on this number on your screen 443-631-2346 443-631-2346 until we meet again next week may God be with you may God keep you may God shield you May God protect you from all evil. May you live for him. May he give you victory over all the works and the plan of the devil. May his will be done in your life. In the name of Jesus. May you have peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Those of you who are watching, may God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Surely have